in Sanon here, you only see banana trees and papaya and a lot of cows. There is no root or bush. There is nobody, nobody of the Balinese really live in this side. No electricity and nothing. So people thought that we are crazy because we live all by ourselves. Nobody wants to believe in 1962 to open a boutique hotel in Sanur. That is era after the independence. Everybody goes to Jakarta. In the 1960s when they started, they were virtually the only hotel on the beach. But when people around here saw that Tanjung Sari was doing very well, it became a model that other people followed. And soon the beach was lined with imitation Tanjung Saris, in that the model was a little bungalow surrounded by a garden, but they didn't get the rest of it. They didn't get the hospitality. I mean, in the beginning, it's probably very much their dream between Via and, and, and Judith, my father and my mother, uh, because they're the one who decided to do something here and started this dream of establishing a, a kind of a home that later on also hosts other people. But when they come here, they certainly have no intention of making a hotel or a money out of, out of their place. They would come to Bali to look for antiques, and the story goes that they were out on the water here in a little outrigger canoe one day, going up and down the coast, and suddenly they spotted a little promontory. And Judith said, oh, isn't that pretty? And there's a little temple there. Shouldn't we go have a look at it? And their companion, Jimmy Pandi, who's a, a neighbor in Bali, uh, said, Oh, well, I'm sure it's not for sale. There's a temple there. You can't, you can't do that. Oh, well, let's talk to them. So they went and talked to the owners of the land, and eventually they made a deal. They fall in love with Sanor, and this place, it's got a name. It's called Tanjung Sari, you know. It's a cape of flower. Who doesn't fall in love with that name by itself? You know, I want to settle in cape of flower. Who doesn't, you know I mean? <laughs> so that's how they begin, you know. The fact that they separated and Tati came, and, and she also has contributed so much in, in her own way to Tanjung Sari, you know. Up until now, you know, it's, it's very much her feeling, her touch that uh, sort of kept the beauty of Tanjung Sari. Mm. Well, something that makes Tanjung Sari special is, for instance, it's always been run by a family that knows how to live. The founder, Wia Waruntu, was a famously generous host, a charismatic man. He seemed to take pleasure in helping people. He would take his guests out to explore for antiques. And his wife, Tati, who has presided over the hotel for over 50 years, has always been a very fashionable, very stylish woman who also is, happens to be a wonderful cook. And so you have a, a theme running through the hotel of marvelous hospitality. And then um, that's a picture of my mother and myself. 1973. I was only six. Yeah. There's my father and myself. This is the front office here where we're sitting now. And uh, this is the Garuda. It's still there. Every evening we always had someone that was dining with us at home. So I think our dinner table was never short of at least eight people on the table. One day, we don't know exactly when, this little family home in, in Bali turned into a, a hotel. 
This is you when you were four years old, this one. Yeah. So Marcy took care of all the guests. All she was the, the heart well. of Tanjung Sari. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah. but my heart still with the Tanjung Sari, you know? Yeah. When I started to work here in 1971, and I retired in 2007, I worked here for 36 years because I love the family. And this me. And this is me. Wow. <laughs> There's something about Tanjung Sari that makes you calm and that lifts your spirit in a way. And it's perhaps because it's just so pretty. It's beautiful in the daytime because of the, the light from the sea and the beach and the gardens and the, the flowers everywhere. But it's also pretty at night too because these big trees that shade the center of the hotel near the, near the beach, at night they have fairy lights and lanterns and that casts a kind of spell. And it seems to keep the mood always gentle somehow. What's special for guests, I think, is that this is a very quiet place, but it's also discreetly sensual. The bungalows, for instance, instead of rooms one next to each other, the bungalows are standalone, they've got a private garden. So there's a real feeling of privacy here that would be very inviting for honeymooners, for instance, or old lovers or new lovers. Look at the size of the bathtubs. They're clearly designed for two people. With the outdoor shower, you have another way of being naked outdoors, you know, in a, in a kind of privacy. This makes it a place that's, that's very sensual. Inside Tanjung Sari, it's quiet, it's protected, it's very gentle, and the staff are also very gentle with their guests. They're very sweet-tempered, they remember your name, they care about you. Seeing how they use the materials, there are nothing uh, very uniform here. They are using only a local kind of uh, building materials wood, bamboo, and stone, and terracotta is all available locally, and we're only using them. And they're also using some coral for the wall cladding to create another accent. And uh, of course, we have the local product of Balinese terracotta for a long time, as you also can see a lot in Tanjung Sari, which probably can uh, be connected to the idea of uh, Majapahit architecture because in Majapahit in the past we are also using a lot of terracotta. The most special thing about the craftsmanship in Tanjung Sari is because it was collected from the old Balinese architecture. Yeah, in the past they made all of these elements without any hurry for deadline or payment. Everything was done with love uh, by the local uh, craft people. This is something that we cannot find anymore today. And uh, actually to me, Tanjung Sari is not only a resort, a hotel, but it's also an architectural museum. We can say that. Salah di antara tahun 65, mungkin tempat port pohon kelapa dulu disuruh dengan dengan almarhum di sini, mungkin pohon kelapa itu, ya sampai sore gitu. Orang ini kerja, ada satu bulan, ya lima orang. Dulu saya sendiri sudah capek sendiri. Tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh, 
ke kanan. 8. 1 2 3 4 5 6. When I 10 years old. He teach dancing at my house and then when I'm 17 I come here to teach dancing in Tanjung Sari. Kiri. 1 2 I don't want a culture gone. I want to uh, to keep uh, traditional. We all Balinese people to look after, to to keep it. Yeah. yeah. Part of the foundation is to empower the classical culture. If we don't preserve it, then the the young Balinese children will will forget about it, and that's the important thing. We do a performance every week or every other week, and it's also with the Balinese orchestra. We ask the men who are in our village to come and play here with the dancers. So, the soul of Tanjung Sari. I want Tanjung Sari is very good to look after us, to keep the culture and art of Bali. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's Yeah. My mother is a very creative person. She's an accomplisher. In Tanjung Sari, she's definitely the one who implemented whatever dishes that we have here and then in the in the rooms it's her really picking out everything in the garden you know she's the one who decides which plants to plant where you know uh, we have to cut a little bit to trim that the front of in there She's very passionate about it as well uh, until this day and she's 80 years old she still has to have her hands on, you know, everything. And when she creates something, it always looks amazing. The theme of the 55th anniversary is Sanor for Indonesia. The idea of Indonesia is actually a new one, but it's composed of very, very old cultures and societies. And perhaps this is what is behind the slogan, Sanor for Indonesia, for this anniversary. These old cultures bring a terrific amount of knowledge, stability, beauty, the kind of things that create the feel of not just Bali, but other parts of Indonesia as well. And these old values from the old Indonesian cultures and societies are perhaps the inspiration for that. If you see the logo of Tanusari is corals and it says private bungalows, it doesn't mention hotel. So my father always wants this is, is something very unique and very different. And that's why we call this Tanusari. <laughs>